This video lecture is about processing Sentinel values with Boolean variables. Now, this is a, just a nice little trick that you can do to increase the readability of your program. So it's not required. It's a special topic in Chapter 4, but it's a nice one, something that you can do uh, in some places where you use a Sentinel value to increase the readability of your program. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. This is the scores average program that we did before I changed it to a priming read and a modification read. So if you're keeping your program like this, this is a good example, a good time to use a Boolean variable. Now, here is our condition. And what is a condition? It's a Boolean expression that evaluates to true or false. And what's a Boolean variable? It's true or false. So I can substitute this condition with a Boolean variable. And what would I want to do this for? Well, there's really no advantage to it other than it will increase the readability of your program. So I'm going to show you an example here. This is one that's similar to the one in the book. And instead of using number, which is my control variable, I'm going to change this to a Boolean variable. I'm going to call it done. And its first value is going to be false. I'm not done yet. Now instead of having number as my control variable and I'm comparing it to zero, I'm just going to say not done. So this is going to be true or false. Done is false, not done is true. So while true, I'm going to continue. So now I, number is no longer control variable, but it is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to get a value from number. If number is not the sentinel, I'm going to accumulate an increment, and I'm just going to keep on going. Now I haven't changed done anywhere in this loop. And if it's my control variable, I'm going to have an infinite loop if I do not change the value somewhere. So I'm going to make it true when my sentinel is reached. If number is greater than zero, I do this. But if it's not, I want to quit the loop. So I'm going to throw in an else. And this is where I'm going to change the value of done. Done equals true. So this is going to basically do the same thing before. But now it's really easy to read. Done equals false. While not done, here's my loop. And, I, and done becomes true when I enter zero. Let's see how it works. This is my third choice. So I'm going to enter zero to quit. I'll just enter some numbers. Zero to quit. Works great. No errors. So this is just a nice little modification using a Boolean variable instead of a condition. They both evaluate to true or false. And it just increases the readability of my program. So I had to make a little change here, make a little change here. It works great. Now another place that you can use this is when you're asking if you want to continue. So you could do this in your guessing game program. Here's our bowling scores program. Now I'm not going to change it up here. I've got a priming read and a modification read. This looks great and it's really easy to read. So I wouldn't change this. But if we go into our main function, I have choice equals one while choice equals equals one. I keep going. Well if somebody's just looking at your program and they see this they might think well what's choice? Why is it one? So this isn't really very user friendly. Let's make another change here. Let's use a Boolean variable. I'm just going to kind of do the opposite. So instead of making done equals false, the way I like to do it is kind of the opposite with true. So I'm going to call, call this variable keep going and it's going to be true. So I'm going to change this condition. I'm going to use my Boolean variable keep going. So now it reads while well, keep going. This makes sense. Somebody looks at my code. And I'm going to do my intro. I'm going to do my get score. Here I've got my count going on. Everything else is fine. And then I ask again, choice equals, do you want to average more scores, yes or no? Now choice is not my control variable. Keep going is. But this is like a little intermediate variable that I can still use. So if choice is no, then I'm going to change the value of keep going to false. When I no longer want to keep going, keep going is false. Now while false, I'm going to stop. So let's, if we run this program, I'm going to do some bowling scores. I'm going to quit. Now it's asking me average more scores, yes or no. If I say no, this is where keep going gets changed to false and my loop quits. So there's two examples of where you can use a Boolean variable instead of a condition and it will help you process your sentinel values. 
So it's just one of those optional things. It's a special topic in the chapter, but it's a good thing to know. Some of you programmers will enjoy using this technique because it does increase the, use of the readability of your program, and it's just kind of a cool thing. So I encourage you to give it a try.